Hi, Ivor Chester at IvorChester.com, your music therapist and balance coach. I just want to tell you a story. I brought this up in a previous video, uh, something that kind of came to mind, and I want to get my music going here. So, so um, as I'm as I'm telling this uh, story, to, I've told this story to a lot of people. I, I enjoy telling it because it was such a life event. Several years ago, I was working um, in a surgical rehab hospital, and I was uh, making the rounds. It was about six o'clock, and it was winter, so it was dark outside, <clears throat> and I was going around and this uh, with my guitar, and I was asked to make room visits and sing songs to uh, the various people who wanted it. Now, again, this is the um, late 90s, and uh, surgery was different than it is now 20 years later. And people took longer to rehabilitate from the trauma of these surgeries, which were much longer than they are now. Anyway, I went into the rooms, and I would sing a handful of songs for about 15 minutes, tops, Sometimes the people were unconscious and they didn't even recognize that I was in there. They, they didn't know. Sometimes they would just kind of look at me and sometimes they would, you know, thank you. Uh, there was this one person, a, a woman, who uh, enjoyed my music. <clears throat> and she goes, boy, hand me my purse. I'll give you a dollar for that. And, I, <laughs> and she was very insistent. I was going, no, please, I, I can't take the dollar. You're getting me fired for taking money from patients. Anyway, this one particular night that was cold and uh, there was only one person in this room and uh, there was the obligatory fluorescent light on uh, over the head of the bed. <clears throat> the bed had one occupant who was a woman who was a one, she was 100 years old. And she was laying in a fetal position, turned away from the door and to where she was facing the black windows. And she just laid there. She had long gray hair. I had never seen hair this long on a, on a woman that age for a number of reasons. One, because if they go into health care and the managed care, they cut their hair so they don't have to mess with it. And two, they, they just get tired of fussing with it. But this woman had long hair that went down her bony back and was feathered out on the bed as she laid on her side. She was skinny, very skinny, skin and bones. Um, no TV was on and uh, there wasn't one in the room. They weren't as common uh, as they are now because uh, TVs are flat screens. They, they took up more space being these huge bulky things back then. So it was quiet in the room, and I looked over, and I figured I'd go ahead and just sing her a couple of songs, then I could move on, because I wanted to get home to my wife. So I, I began singing, and for some reason I, I sang uh, just some old hymns, and I sang uh, the old rugged cross When I was done, I was done with that song, that hymn. So I sang the next one, which was something like In the Garden. And I figured, okay, I'll, one more and I can move on. And I did something like How Great Thou Art, <clears throat> very gently, just me and the guitar. And as I finished the song, I started to back out. And as I did, I heard this this voice that said, that is nice, sing me another. I looked around because I thought it was maybe somebody to come into the, in through the door, which happens a lot. The people on the outside in the lobby uh, area, the common area, will come into the rooms where I am just to hear the music, but there's nobody. And I, I looked down into the bed, the person in the bed hadn't changed. So I sang, uh, I sang another song. 
And when I was done, I hear again, and this time I'm looking into the bed, and she said, that's nice, sing me another. And I said, what do you want to hear? And she goes, I don't care, just play something. So I, I played another. And she, uh, every once in a while she would sing a word, like if we were singing again the old rugged cross, which she didn't, but if she were singing the old rugged cross, she would just sing something like, hell, away. Well, I thought that's kind of cool. And as I continued to sing these songs, and again, I was only supposed to be in there for about 15 minutes, but I ended up being in there, 15 minutes had already passed, and I, uh, as we progressed through it, she started to become a little more verbal. And I said, "That's uh, uh, that, uh, do you like that song? And she wouldn't answer. Sing me another. So I pop out another. Then she said, finally, after like the fourth or fifth one, she goes, you were flat. That was flat. You, you sang that one flat. That was wrong. You don't sing the chorus like that. You sang a, You don't sing the harmony. Sing the sing the melody. It was flat or whatever. But there was some look on her face. I've seen angry people enough working in psych and enough with Jero psych. But there was a little sparkle to her her lips and occasionally her gray eyes when she opened it just a little. And I said, okay, well, how would you sing it? Just sing another one. Well, this continued. And I spent about 45 minutes. And I finally asked her before I left, I said, well, my name is Ivor. And she, she goes, what a name, Ivor, Ivor. Who gave you that name, Ivor? <laughs> I said, well, then what's your name? And she goes, Pebble. No, not Pebbles. This is not the Flintstones. She goes, Pebble. Just one. I said, that's a remarkable name. She goes, yes, I know. I said, well, I'm going to go. She goes, fine, go, go. And I, I left. And I thanked her. And I went and did my charting, which had the chart on everybody and their responses and their individual medical charts. And then I uh, went home. Now, I started that job later in the afternoon, like three-ish. And I had other contracts as well. But I got a call the next morning from my supervisor and she was a bit upset with me. And she goes, uh, Ivor, you, uh, you messed, up your, messed up your charting. You need to come in and correct that straight away. And I, I oh gosh, now, I'm not, I don't like charting. I don't know anybody who really does, but I, uh, I try and get it done just so I could do the rest of my job and enjoy that. But I said, out of curiosity, uh, what did I mess up? She goes, well, with Miss Pebble, you have, uh, and she called her by her last name, but she goes, with Miss Pebble, you, uh, you said that you had a conversation with her. And I said, well, yeah, we talked for about 30, 40 minutes. And she goes, Ivor, Pebble hasn't spoken to anybody in 10 years. They believe she has brain damage. She didn't talk. I went, I had a conversation with her. I talked with her. And I, I told her that. She goes, Ivor, you just need to come in and fix the chart. Okay. So I did. I came in earlier, brought my guitar, and I didn't go to the chart. I went to the, my boss's office and I said, I'm going to go sing to Pebble. And I said, if you want to come and listen, that'd be fine. And I walked in. So, you know, cocksure, sure, yeah, watch this. I'll make her sing. I walk in. And when I do, uh, I say, hey, Pebble, it's Ivor. She's moved a little bit. They moved her. And uh, nothing. She said nothing. So, hey, how about we sing some of those songs we sang last night? <laughs> nothing. So I start singing the same songs I was singing last night. Old Rugged and How Great Thou Art and In the Garden, Amazing Grace, the standard olds and nothing for a couple of songs. 
And then I said, well, Pebble, did you like that one? She said nothing. My boss is looking at me with this deadpan like, you're wasting my time. So as I start to step back, I hear this, who's that at the door? The door, somebody's at the door. What's she doing at my door? I said, oh my, great. Uh, I don't know. And, and you know, it, I didn't know exactly how to respond. I said, well, that's, that's my boss. And she goes, tell her to get out, get out, boss, get out. <laughs> and my boss, she, she, her eyes got real big and she backed out. She goes, okay. Cause it was proof enough that yeah, the woman was verbal. I came in and visited Pebble a lot because she was amazing. She was a hundred year old woman who, because of some family choices and just lifestyle issues that had come up over the course of her later life, she had to be put in a nursing home around 20 years before, like when she was 80. People who put her in there were dead. She had no more money. She had no friends. She had nothing. The only thing she had left in life was that one bit of control to where she decided who she was going to talk to and who she would not. And for over 10 years, she spoke to no one. When I brought the music in to her, and this is all the music, when I tell great stories about music, it's not about me, it's about the music. And as she heard the music, the old hymns, she remembered that. She saw that as a communication point. She knew it was relatable because most people who sing the, the hymns are at least believers. And she related to me in a way that apparently I, I resonated with because she ribbed me. She ripped me new ones on a regular basis and she chuckled. You'd hear this <laughs> kind of a cackle and uh, it was great. And if she didn't like the song, she'd yell at me. She said, I don't like the Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Well, she checked out. Kind of broke my heart after a couple of weeks. She checked out. And uh, she went back to another nursing home south of Irving. And uh, went and visited her in uh, the bed. And she had declined. She, she was in her bed and laying there. She didn't get out. And I said, hi. And sang to her and she had made a request. She wanted to hear how great thou art. And she spoke to me. She talked normal. And the couple of times I went there, she would speak to me and the nurse would go, I'd never heard her talk before. I say, yeah, yeah, she, she loves the music. She'll, she'll relate with music if you sing to her. And I heard some time later she had passed. We have choices in our lives of what we do and don't do, who we reach out for and who we shut out. Life often doesn't give us a fair hand. That's a constant actually. We make a choice to reach out for help or to shut ourselves in like an oyster. Pebble was able in the last few days of her life, of her very long life, to reach out and improve her, her life just enough to where she could speak to people again. She could have faith enough. She could have belief enough in people. Perhaps she even believed in God. I pray she did. I believe she did. But she still lives today because now you know about Pebble and you're going to know what she's like. You can imagine what she was like, but a hundred years from say 1997, she was born in 1887. Imagine growing up this scrawny little kid in the dirt somewhere in Texas playing around, probably getting her way. 
She's still around today. The nursing homes are packed with them. Psych hospitals, rehab, clinics, halfway houses. They're full of people like Pebble. Life's given a crappy blow. You can go there and visit them with music. You can go there and improve your life. But you have to be empowered. You have to know enough of what you're doing and have that passion. Now, do you know what you're doing? All that takes is just the passion and love of people. Follow me at IverChester.com. Stick around here. I have more videos coming. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at IverChester3. I'll be providing enough tools over the next few weeks to help you with that next step to where you can bring, <laughs> you can collect pebbles in your life and cast them to the further generations that she never even knew of. I'm Ivor Chester. Thank you for your time. God bless you.